Okay, very good. So now we've seen two methods to solve this equation, and we're going to look at a third method now. And in fact, this third method is really going to be a method which is somewhat more generalizable. So we were able to square both sides, and that happened to work in this particular case. But it'll often be the case that if you've got an expression, an inequality involving absolute values, that squaring both sides isn't actually going to work. Okay, so what we're going to do is to come up with a piecewise defined function for which we're going to be able to solve it somewhat more easily. Okay. So what do we do? The first thing that we do is we're going to take this expression and we're going to use the rules that we know that we can apply to, to inequalities to subtract one thing from both sides, well, add something negative. And all we're going to do is we're going to move this to the other side as you would do with a normal equation. So we have x minus 2 minus x minus 7 is less than 0. Okay? This is the equation, or the inequality, I should say, that we want to solve. But what we can do is we can take this object here and define a function. Okay, we can say we're going to define f of x is absolute x minus 2 minus x minus 7. Okay, that's a perfectly well-defined function. But we can actually define this as a piecewise defined function. Okay, so we can define this as a piecewise defined function. And we're going to want to define this in three regions for x less than 2, for x between 2 and 7, and for x greater than 7. Okay? So for x less than 2, this here is negative, the thing inside here is negative, and so the absolute value changes its sign, and the same thing here. So if x is less than 2, then what's inside here is negative, and the absolute value changes its sign. Okay? So we end up with 2 minus x minus 7 minus x. This is true for x let's say x less than 2, okay? We have x minus 2 minus 7 minus x for 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 7, okay? And then finally we have x minus 2 minus x minus 7 for x greater than 7. Okay. You're going to have to excuse the fact that I seem to use different notations for x and x, but these are really the same thing. Okay. So we've defined this piecewise defined function, but let's simplify this a little bit. Okay. So this is our f of x. Looks like that. And now let's write this in a slightly, diff a slightly simpler form. Okay. I'm going to write it above. I'm going to write f of x is equal to what have we got? So here we've got 2 minus 7, which is minus 5, and we've got minus x minus minus x, so that cancels. So minus 5 for x less than 2. Here we've got x minus 2 minus 7 minus x, so we've got x minus minus x, we've got 2x, and then we've got minus 2 minus 7, which is minus 9, and this holds true for 2 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 7. Okay. How about here? Well, here the x's cancel, and we have minus 2 minus minus 7, which is 5, for x greater than 7. Okay? So this is the definition of the function, which we defined, I'm going to write it here, as f of x equals x minus 2 minus x minus 7. Okay. Good. So now what do we have? Now we have a function which is defined piecewise, and what we mean by that is there are three pieces to it. So it's defined, if we take the real line, here's the origin, here's 2, and here's 7. So this is defined separately for the region to the left of 2, okay, below 2, it's defined in one way between 2 and 7, and it's defined in another way for x above 7, okay? So this region here, it's just 5, this region here, it's minus 5, and this region in the middle, it's 2x minus 9, 
Okay. So we can now ask the question, can we solve the inequality? But what was the inequality? Well, we've written down just a function here, but now we need to remind ourselves about what the inequality was. Okay. So I'm going to rub this off, and then we'll look at it in terms of the inequality itself. So now the inequality, if you remember, was x minus 2 uh, minus x minus 7 was less than 0. Okay. So now let's try and solve this inequality by using the piecewise defined function. Okay. So for the region x less than 2, we have the equation minus 5 is less than 0. Okay. Minus 5, which is now the piecewise defined part of it here, for x less than 2. Minus 5 is less than 0, and indeed that's true. So all x less than 2 solve the inequality. We're going to skip the middle one and we're going to go straight to the third one because that's going to be the easy one as well. Okay, let's look at that. Okay, so now let's look at x greater than 7. So if we look at x greater than 7, what's the function for x greater than 7? Well, it's 5. Is 5 less than 0? No. Never true. So the inequality does not hold for x greater than 7 because it gives us 5 less than 0. We know that's not true. So the inequality does not hold. Now we need to look at the middle bit, okay? The region between 2 and 7. Let's look at that. So in the region between 2 and 7, we have for 2 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 7, we have 2x minus 9, that's the left-hand side of the inequality, is less than 0. Now this is easy to solve. Okay, we use the basic properties of inequalities, and we end up with x less than 9 over 2. Okay? So that says that within the region for x between 2 and 7, so long as x is less than 9 over 2, we solve the inequality. Okay? So what we've seen is that for x less than 2, it's always true. For x, less, x greater than 7, it's never true. But for x between 2 and 7, so long as x is less than 9 over 2, then it's true. Okay? But in fact, we can look at the union of the regions for which it's true, which is x less than 2 and x less than 9 over 2, and the answer then is that for all x less than 9 over 2, the inequality holds. This is the same answer that we came up with the graphical way, the kind of intuitive way, and the way using the basic properties of inequalities, and now we found it a third way. Okay? The nice thing about this is that had we had an equation which didn't just have two absolute values, but had three absolute values, we could have done the same thing. So let's look at a very, very quick example and see what we would have to do there. Okay? So, what if we had something like x minus 2 less than x minus 3 plus x minus 1? I'm making up this example as I go along. Okay? We can again put everything on one side. So, 0 less than x minus 3 plus x minus 1 minus x minus 2. Okay? And we can write the right hand side, this, as a piecewise defined function. Okay? Now we're going to have to do it not just in terms of three parts, but in terms of five parts. We're going to have to look at this for x less than 1. We're going to have to look at it for 
x between 1 and 2, x between 2 and 3, and x less than, oh sorry, x uh, greater than 3. Okay, I like four parts. Okay, so in this case, between 1 and 2, between 2 and 3, greater than 3, yes, perfect. So in this case, we've got four regions that we have to calculate the equations for, so we would end up with a piecewise defined function like this. So our f of x looked like this, where this is our f of x. And then we could solve each of those inequalities separately and see if indeed the inequality, zero less than the value of that function in that region, held, and then we would be able to solve it for this inequality with three absolute values. Okay, I hope that's of some help. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. Okay, very good.